unusual, but it gives you a, a framework for thinking about this. Carbon intensity went down a bit. Energy intensity went down a lot. Per capita output grows a bit, population grows a bit, but overall we're doing better in that year, significantly better. We're reducing energy intensity, reducing carbon intensity more than we have population per capita output growth. If output, if output growth slowed or population growth stopped, then you should be able to do even better than that. And here's a trend, a good trend, but one that needs continuing, which is the projected carbon dioxide emissions. These are official US energy information projections. And you can see that the projections have gone down, down, and down, and down every year in a short period of time. They still are not going flat or overall down, so that's not good, but uh, there's been massive change. I mean, these are official projections where they say, well, this is the way it's going to be, and then just a few years later, it's going to be a completely different way. So we should continue that big arrow downward, which is their arrow, not my arrow. They're concluding that this is the way things are going. <laughs> okay, these are some of the reasons um, for the downward shift. But the reasons including um, shift to natural gas, slower growth in electricity demand, um, improved fuel economy standards, um, downward revisions in economic growth, don't include a green Keynesian program of major investments in energy efficiency or an accelerated shift to solar and wind energy. If you put those in, you should be able to do better. You know, we're doing a little bit. We're sort of working around the edges there. But um, the situation is basically ridiculous, say, in the um, in the uh, southwestern US. You should be able to completely solarize that. If you think about what the Germans have done in a country which is cloudy and not well suited for solar, you know, they've put a big emphasis on solarization. It should be possible with very little effort to completely solarize the US Southwest, you know, all of Southern Europe. You know, if we thought in a sort of wartime mode, then we could do that. We think in a wartime mode only when it happens, only when you know, Syria breaks apart and there's an influx of you know, hundreds of thousands of refugees. Gee, what do we do? But if we apply to the kind of, of wartime mode thinking to this problem, we should be able to make significant steps forward. The worst thing about neoclassical economics is it tells you, oh, you can't do that. You just have to wait and see what the market does. If you take a Keynesian approach, you would say, what are our social goals? How do we need to achieve them? How, do, how can we use markets to help achieve them, but use conscious pol public policy to guide markets? Um, if you put that into the mix, I think you get something potentially significantly different. Now, um, I'm trying to lean, obviously, as you see here, on the optimistic side. Um, I don't want to say that. Uh, um, Charlie's you know, gloomy science about this is necessarily wrong, but I'd like to sort of divide it in half. I'd like to say if we are you know, at 100% in terms of bad carbon usage and we need to get back to 20%, the first half going from 100% to 60% as I showed earlier should be fairly easy emphasizing efficiency, emphasizing renewables, emphasizing the technology we already know about, let alone future technology, um, and emphasizing a Keynesian approach. That should be very easily doable. The second half may be more tough. There you may have to get into more of this question about do we have to trade off quality of life and can we really do it, um, but there's also significant progress in technology, solar costs coming down all the time. So uh, my sort of bottom line here is we as economists and as ecological econo economists have an awful lot to offer in policy. And we should stop just complaining all the time about how bad neoclassical economics is, and we should start making this specific and offering it. What I have here is conceptual, so it's theoretical, um, and a few figures in it. But I think it offers the basis for very specific policies on energy efficiency, on carbon reduction, on employment, and you know, we should be in the business of putting that stuff forward aggressively. Thanks.